Verification Corner! Hello, welcome to Verification Corner. I'm Rustan Leino. When you compute in a program, we often compute piece by piece, and in, at every step of the way we have computed a partial solution. Today we're going to take a look at how you specify programs with partial solutions, and as we go through that as well, we're, we'll find uh, quantifiers and comprehensions along the way. Let's take a look. I'm Bruce Delano. And I'm Rosemary Manahan. Rosemary, uh, who are you and what are you doing on Verification Corner? Okay, well, um, I'm a lecturer at NUI Maloop, um, where I teach program verification to undergraduates and postgraduate students. Uh -huh, right, and when you do that, do you, do you use any tools? Um, yeah, the tool that I use primarily is uh, the SpecSharp programming system uh, to verify C-sharp programs. And I use that um, through Visual Studio and the website Rise for Fun. Uh -huh. right. So um, we're going to look at uh, tools uh, using uh, Visual Studio, but um, you at home can more easily uh, just run the same examples on Rise for Fun. So um, what do the students think of uh, verification? What, what things do they struggle with as they, as they try to learn um, about verification? Yeah, they, they, they like using the tools, but they do struggle with um, loop invariants and um, writing down partial solutions to problems that they're trying to verify. Um, so um, it's something that we focus on quite a bit in class. Mm -hmm. Can you uh, give us an example? Sure, yeah. Um, okay, let's have a, a look. So um, if we look at a, an example of which uh, process as an array, and we call that a, array A, um, an integer array, which um, here we've got a, a method P, and say we want to calculate some property for, for that array. Is there something that you would suggest? Sure. How about we check if, uh, if all of the elements of the array are either 8 or 11? Okay. So if we're going to check if all the elements in the array are either 8 or 11, um, we need to uh, process that array and calculate a partial solution calculate a full solution and that solution will be boolean mm -hmm. okay so we have a return type boolean um, we should write a post condition so the keyword for expressing a post condition is ensures um, so this method should ensure that all of the array all of the values in the array have some property okay so for all values in the array okay which is um, going to have um, indices starting at zero and continuing until the length of the array. Okay, and you suggested that we might check to see if those array values were equal to eight. Mm -hmm. Eight or 11. Or 11, okay. So we've expressed that in this way. And of course, when we calculate that solution, we need to store the solution somewhere, so we'll store it in a result variable. Mm -hmm. So this so method says that the the post condition says that the result of the method is going to be uh, whether or not all of them, all of the elements are eight or eleven. Well, I know in SpecSharp a very simple way to do that. We can just have, have a simple return statement in the body that says return for all, and then you copy that expression. Okay, yeah, we could express it in that way, but. Um, Let's use the opportunity to teach our audience a little bit about loops and writing down partial solutions. Okay. So <laughs> rather than just writing an expression, we'll um, write a loop structure. Okay. okay. So I suppose the first thing we should think about is what we want our program to do. And the program is going to return a, a Boolean um, variable, which we've already said here. But we need to declare with that variable. So um, let's declare OR, which would be our partial result. And um, when we declare that, we also, of course, need to return it. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and this partial result, what, what is it? What does it mean? Okay. So the partial result is um, if we if we stop the program at any point when we're processing the array, that we we know what we have calculated so far. Mm -hmm. Okay. So at the beginning, we won't have processed anything in the array. So. Um, all of the values in the array will be either 8 or 11, mm -hmm. so the all result the will be true. Uh -huh. yeah. Good. So we've seen nothing. Okay, so if we're going to process this, well, we said we would need a, a loop structure, so let's introduce a loop. Um, okay, um, the loop 
starts at, at the index zero, loops through all elements of the array, and in there we want to do some calculation, again, of a partial solution. So as we step through, we look at a new element of the array, we uh, calculate the result for that element, and we store the solution for that in our partial solution variable or. Um, of course, we have to take into account the partial solution we've had so far, mm -hmm. so the new partial solution will be the old par partial solution and something else. Huh? Okay. Uh, and uh, I guess we should extend it with uh, conjoin in there whether or not the current element is either 8 or 11. Okay, so yes. Um, the partial solution, the old partial solution conjoined with the thing that we're trying to calculate for the current value, which is if that value is an 8 or 11. Okay, and of course we're dealing with the jth value, the current element that we're looking at, so we change our index here to j. Oh, well there it is. Okay. Uh, that looks to me like, um, like a correct program, but I'm noticing that SpecSharp has a complaint. Ah, yes, SpecSharp complains that there's an unsatisfied post condition. So we know the post condition is the full solution for all elements of the array, um, but SpecSharp doesn't know anything about the partial solution or which we've calculated in the loop. Mm -hmm. So we need to give a little bit more information and we can express that in an invariant. And the invariant Basically, well, at the end, it wants to say exactly what we have in our post condition. So we can copy that down here as the invariant. Okay. But this time, we're not expressing the final result. We're expressing the partial result or. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the partial result or does not calculate the property over all elements in the array, but all elements that we've looked at so far. So all elements up to but not including J. Oh. Ah, and SpecSharp is. is happy. It verifies it. Okay. Oh, wonderful. So here we have computed um, uh, one array element at a time, whether or not the entire array uh, has contains uh, only 8s or, or 11s. Yeah. But suppose that I'm not interested in checking if all of the elements are 8s or 11. Maybe I want to know how many of them are uh, 8 or 11. Can we do that? Okay. Um, so when we calculate a property for an element in the array, we use the, um, the quantifier for all. Um, if we want to take something like counting the elements in the array, we can use a comprehension oh. called count. Okay, aptly named. Okay, so count will return a value based on the property that we're looking at. So it will return a one if the property holds and a zero otherwise. Mm -hmm. And then so it will sum them up. And it will sum them up, mm -hmm. yes. So if we uh, sum up the values in the number of elements in an array that has a property, well, the return value would be an integer rather than a boolean. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we change the return value and we change the type of our return variable. Mm -hmm. um, of course, we have a problem here. Um, int or equals true, it's a type mismatch. So mm -hmm. or's initial value, the partial solution, beginning. I know. Uh, so, so far we have not looked at any elements, so the partial solution is zero because so far we have not found any um, that have that property. Correct. Okay. And I would suppose that we also need to change the invariant to have a count there instead of the for all. Yes. Very good. Okay, so the partial solution or will be the count of all the elements in the array that has the property that we're, we're seeking. Okay, but the other thing of course we have to change is the, the code. Ah. Okay, our code still calculates um, whether all values in the array have that property, we want to count it. So I'd suggest that we might change the partial solution to add in a value. Mm -hmm. And ah, So if that property there is true, then we want to add in one, otherwise uh, add in zero. Okay, so if the property is true, we add in a one, otherwise we add in zero. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, and there yes, it is. we have success. So SpecSharp believes that um, we can establish this post condition for the full array uh, based on the information we've given it in the invariant and it can verify that the code we've supplied meets that specification. Oh, great, so that's another uh, partial solution. Now something that uh, you might also do uh, with an array is maybe you'd like to sum up all the elements of the array. Um, can we write um, a partial solution and that, um, or describe a partial solution for that? 
Yeah, so we have the quantifiers for all and exists, but we have comprehensions um, for counting, for summing, for taking products, mins and max. Um, so if we want to sum, well, we just use the comprehension which we've called sum. Mm -hmm. And this time, again, the full result will be the summation of all values in the array. And we don't need to worry about the properties this time. We're just calculating uh, the summation of all the values that are in that array. Cool. Mm -hmm. And how does that affect our invariant then? Okay, so um, again, the invariant will give us the partial solution. So we have a variable or which contains the partial solution. We replace result by, by or, and that will contain the sum of all the values that we have processed so far in the array. So all the values between zero and j. Okay, so again, don't worry about the property, but we take the sum of all the values that we've looked at so far. Um, um, I spotted a typo. Um, yeah. We're now summing uh, for each of those indices a sub j, but in fact we want to sum a sub i for all of the, uh, not there, um, all of the elements in that array. Oh, of course. Here. Okay, for all elements in the array, we're processing between 0 and j. Perfect. Okay. Now, of course, we have to change the code again. So when we sum the elements of the array, well, our partial solution will just add the current element that we're looking at, which is aj, to the partial solution we had so far. Hmm. Very nice. And there again we can see it's, uh, uh, it's all correct because uh, Spetchart verifies that for us. Um, but um, maybe there's um, a different way I can think of that we could describe the partial solutions here. Here we have described all of the, um, all of the elements that we've looked at so far. But okay. we could also uh, try to think of, of expressing uh, the the invariant, the partial solution in terms of what we have left to do. Okay, so it's true that we could express this invariant in a different way. Um, the partial solution or here is the sum of all the values that we've processed so far, but we could have easily said that we would take the partial solution or that we've had so far and we add that to what's yet to be processed. So all the elements between j, or aj, and a dot length. Okay. Um, and if we sum those two things together, well, what should that equal? That should equal what we want the final result to be, which exactly. is the eventual sum. There we go. Okay. So let's just show you the full invariant. Okay. So the invariant now expresses the partial solution which if it is summed with the remaining elements in the array, uh, the remaining elements that need to be processed in the array, will equal to the summation of the full array. Very nice. Uh, so here you're showing an, um, a comprehension like sum here, where we're not starting uh, from zero up to j, but instead uh, we have a different range of elements that, we, uh, that we're looking at, uh, j through the end of the array. Um, so, um, Okay, so here we have two different ways of writing the invariant for, in fact, otherwise the same, the same loop, the same program. Yeah. Uh, should one prefer one over the other? Um, it depends on the, the solution that you provide. So um, in this case, it doesn't make a, 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 ma a major difference, but in some cases it may be easier to express and easier for the verifier to work with um, the solution that has yet to be computed rather than the solution that has being computed and in, in this case probably the first one is the easier one to to read so it's probably the one that I would recommend my students to to write. Mm -hmm. But there may be other problems that that the other one is is a better solution yes, for. Yes absolutely. All right and so there we have the program. Dude. Sweet. All right, so today we looked at partial solutions and how you specify them using loop invariants. And in, in these examples, all the partial solutions have to do with uh, quantifiers like for all or comprehensions like uh, count and sum. And there, there are many other ways that you could write such things as well. We also saw that sometimes when, when you write a partial solution, it's nice to focus on what you have done so far. Uh, for example, the array elements that you've processed so far. And sometimes uh, it can be it can lead to a cleaner invariant if you write uh, if you write invariant focusing on those things that, that are left to be processed. Um, 
So you've watched the Verification Corner. I'm Bruce Delano. I'm Rosemary Monaghan. Program, Program safely. safely. Verification.